Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. The team's tournament continues. The hitman, Brandon Hanna and the hurricane, Jada Paramo, as they face the former movie trivia showdown champions of the world, the odd couple, Snyder and Andrako. Mark, how you doing, bud? I am doing great. I will give you $10 if you can guess my name today without Google. And for everybody watching, this is a matchup that we love because you have on one side legacy, experience, veteran play. And on the other side, well, yeah, we know who Jader and Brandon are. They played very well in the past, Christian. I love what these two youngins bring to the table because I don't think that they're scared of anything that is not a haunted hotel room. Yeah, well, that's very true. But look, this is something that, you know, normally you'd say, well, the odd couple, they have it locked in, move on. But I'll give you the name of Andres Cabrera. Uh, Stacy Howard comes to mind. Uh, so many big, massive upsets. Chance Ellison over Parker. Uh, you know, Perry Namoroff over Kalinowski. There's just so many this season. There's just so many uh, upsets that it's it's not outside the realm that both Brandon Hanna and Jada Paramo Jada Bromo had a very nice run in the singles tournament. Brandon Hanna's never played in this division before, so that's going to be interesting. And they're going up against a team that are the former champions, and both, not only, Jindraco had a nice run in the singles tournament, Snyder made it to the finals, and Snyder almost won the entire tournament. He won four matches. He's playing lights out right now. So this is going to be a very tough test for Category 9. If they're able to, if they're able to do it today, then they really cement themselves as, okay, this team is one to look out for. The odd couple, though, is playing. I think they're playing for survival as far as togetherness goes. They've made, they both made it very clear, both Andrako and Snyder, that they know that they play together well. They know that they like playing with each other. But is this the last run? Uh, is this the last one? Can they do it? If they win the championship, the answer is going to be no. But can they do it? We're going to find out today how, how it's going to look. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see how the chemistry shapes up because we know that Mark Andreco and Jeff Snyder, however they get along, it works and it becomes magic when it comes to answering movie trivia questions, at least. And so with Brandon and Jader, that's really the big question mark. Uh, do they have good rapport? Are they going to be able to lock in on an answer, particularly when it's conferring with each other in round two? Or maybe it does come down to that big five-point question. But either way, whether you're a fan of the movie trivia showdown, you know from Andres or from the coyote that anything can happen in these tournaments and if you want to back it up we always see upsets every year in march madness could another one happen today we're about to find out and we're about to find out exactly how we got where we are right now Alec you know i'm i'm glad we can hear brandon has stop talking now you think i talk too much roxy talks way too much Somebody really needs to shut her up. Leave the trash talk to me, and you just keep trying to blow smoke up your player's skirts, and I'll be back. You're damn right. Jader and Hannah? That's the team? He's just an IG player. Ken's not stupid enough to put him in. Ken's as stupid as they come. Jader, a hurricane! Jader has had a pretty decent year for a dude plucked out of the audience. He always stumbles into trouble with that second round. Ah, uh, yes. Everyone wants to know why I put Category 9, Brandon Hanna and Jada Paramo in this tournament. I didn't know that there were, like, no requirements at all to get into the team's tournament anymore. Hanna and Paramo want this more than any other players I know. Android and Draco, the insider Jeff Snyder, the odd couple. I'm back after a devastating finals loss, and I am hungry. I am coming for my belt, the belt I've worn twice, the team title belt. I do. I actually have the odd couple winning the tournament. You guys think you can play against the odd couple, one of the greatest teams to ever play? champions. I was a little too nice at the end to guys like Riley and Ethan Irwin and Adam Pelzer. It's, it's tough to get mad at, at these guys. But Brandon Hanna, this kid's a punk. I mean, if I can't manage the Drews from the sidelines, I have to manage them in the game. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, totally. Uh, today should be pretty fun. Your day is coming. 
and I think it's today. Tough draw for you. Odd couple. Out. Look, it's, it, it's a cool story. You know, you got the former champions trying to make their way back, and, and can they do it? Can they coexist again as the odd couple and do what they did when they took the titles off of one of the greatest teams of all time in the Shire Wolves? And can they do it again? Jeff Snyder is arguably the best teams player we've ever seen. He's a two-time champion. He had six title defenses with the Patriots. It would be great to see them kind of come back to glory. And on the other hand, you have Brandon Hanna, who's never played in this division before. What if he can make a name for himself in this division? And then Jada Paramo, a guy playing plucked out of the crowd in Orlando. And we know already the beef that he's had with Roxy, and Roxy's been so tough on Jader in that last match. Maybe Jader wants to shut her up and, and, and do something here today by doing so, by taking out her prized possession in the odd couple. And then don't forget about the pit boss, Ken Napsok. Yeah, you know, you bring up the pit boss, and I'm very interested to see because he was sort of tossed into his managerial role, even when you're talking as recent as the singles tournament. Has he settled in? What is his coaching strategy going to be like? We know what a Roxy Stryer brings to the table. We've seen her legendary Vince Lombardi-like motivational speeches. How is Ken going to counter that locker room presence? And I guess we're going to find that out right now because we welcome in both the manager. Ken Napsock and the manager, Roxy Stryer. I guess I, I have the floor. I'll kick off here. Ken Napsock, I just asked the question to the fans and everybody watching, and I'm going to ask you directly. How do you counter Roxy's incredible inspirational speeches with your team? By silence. Letting my players know that they know what they're doing. They don't need me chatting in their ear. They don't need me cheerleading on the side. They're adults, they're professionals. They wanted this more than anyone on my roster. I have a great collection of players on my team and everyone's mad at me. Deep 13, deep Deep 13's mad at me. I, I, I just think Hannah and Jader wanted this. They wanted to be here. They wanted to work together. And when you look a player or players in the eyes and you go, I don't need to say anything. You know what you're capable of. They're a young army, and you got to bleed an army sometimes. And we got a championship caliber team to go out there and to uh, improve what we can uh, do to ourselves and everyone in the league. And that's kind of it. That's kind of all you need to say, Newsy. But before we get to Bronx, I got to ask you, Ken. I'll tell you that it was. It didn't just throw me off that you didn't put Deep Thirteen. It threw me off that you put Brandon Hanna in there who has been vocal against you has argued against you has said you shouldn't be the manager who kicked you out of his match and then lost who managed you when you lost how and why and what is the relationship like with you and uh, hannah now it's cold it's frosty and it doesn't need to be anything else Look at all the championship teams in sports, uh, which this is all through the history of of athletics. Uh, you know, I always go to the 78 Yankees. You and I are Yankee fans, Harloff. They didn't get along. You can go along the way to other teams. Uh, there's so many players that get along uh, on the field and not off. Hannah and I don't need to be friends and have a cup of tea after this. Absolutely not. I need him to know do what he's capable of and what he believes he's capable of. And sometimes belief is more powerful than anything else. You just got to believe in yourself. I believe I can fly. Yeah, that song and stuff. Yeah, that's this. That's Brandon. Roxy, you're shaking I'm, your head. Over there. I'm Go. highly concerned that this show is going to give me wrinkles, and I've been really trying to work on my skin routine, but that that speech from Ken Napsock, what? You're going to be silent with two newbies? Two newbies who've never been in this team's tournament, who barely know each other, let alone how to play this game yet? I mean, I'm stoked that that's your strategy because woof, woof, what is this team? Why don't we, is there no standards anymore for how you get into the team tournament? Did, did, have all the rules gone out the window? Like you literally just have to be a person. You have to be born. That's how you become a player in the movie trivia schmodown teams tournament because there's no prerequisite clearly because these two guys are here. Wow. All right. Well, shots fired by Roxy Stryer and we have Ken Napsock, who seems confident in his choice. And we're going to find out exactly what happens in just a moment here. Good luck to both Roxy Stryer and Ken Napsock. See you in a moment. 
All right, so we're going to remove both Ken and Roxy, and it looks like, look, Roxy's fired up, and Roxy wants to uh, take this team out and, and move on forward, and Ken seems to be confident with his decision, Mark. Yeah, they seem ready to go, Christian. I was a big fan of the early 80s show that Ken had with Jeff Altman, comedian of note, and with Roxy Stryer ready to go, I think you and I are just about prepped. Do you have any last questions for moi? Are you ready? I knew you were going to ask. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Introducing first, representing the Burning Droogs, making their showdown team debut, the Hurricane Shader Haramo. And Brandon, the Hitman, Hannah, Category 9. Guys, they have made it. They are here. Uh, let me start with the Hitman. So, Brandon, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Ken. You have been vocal against Ken. You have said that you should have been the one managing the Drews. You, you... You've left uh, a, a stream. You've done all these stuff. You've you've had these arguments, and then Ken gives you the chance to be in the teams. Our, our fence is mended. What, what what's it like right now? Well, you know, Christian, I just I look back and I think about what happened to poor Jader in the singles tournament. I thought to myself, Wow, what a talented individual! He is such a great person to have on the Burning Droogs, but that's a damn shame about his manager. If only he had somebody else there to inspire him, to show him the light. And I figured, well, I didn't win the vote to be manager of the Droogs. So I asked myself, what could I do to really be in Jader's corner? And I figured, well, I could be on a team with Jader. And with me here, sure, Ken's here too you know that relationship is what it is but with me here jader can thrive i can thrive category nine can thrive okay uh, but jader when you look at hurricanes sure they're very dangerous and unpredictable but with brandon hannah i'd say he was just as much whether it's on twitter earlier this year on schmodown recap shows where he just seems to be a wild card and fly off the rails so is having you as a teammate going to be a calming influence for him? Are you the anchor of Category 9? I mean, uh, we're going to see, obviously, today uh, how we handle this situation. I don't know about being an anchor. I Obviously, we, we reached out to each other. We talked to each other. And I was just like, I think me and you, we can, we can uh, do some damage. We're going to wreak some damage. And that's pretty much it, man. It was a very quick conversation. Hey, are you in? Yes, I'm in. Let's, do, let's go for it. All right, so Brandon Hanna, Jada Paramo, you face the former champions here in the Odd Couple in just a moment. We'll see you in a moment. Good luck. All right, we're going to I don't even know if these guys have, have ever shook hands in person. I do know the team you're about to introduce slept in bunk beds in Chicago. And their opponents representing the Rock Stars with a record of six wins. Four defeats and three knockouts. They are the former movie trivia schmodown team champions of the world, the android Mark and Draco, and the insider Jeff Snyder, the odd couple. The former champions are here. They are ready to go. And Draco, let's start with you here. You guys have both been vocal about, you know, is this the last run for the odd couple? How many times you've been very successful together. You have worked well together, but this is the last run in the team's tournament. We don't know yet, but it seems how are you feeling and what's the communication been like leading up to this tournament? Um, it's been great. You know, uh, Jeff and I have talked a couple of times over this about things other than the Schmodown. And, uh, you know, I adore Jeff. Jeff and I play really well together. Uh, if we did break up, it wouldn't be Sonny and Cher getting divorced. It would be Matt and Ben wanting to go do other things and still be friendly with each other. But I could play with Jeff for the rest of my days in this game because he's he he's plays to my strengths. I play to his strengths. And I think we're good together. 
So whatever will be, will be. But all being said, when this is all said and done, I have nothing but good things to say about Jeff or Roxy and never will. Yeah, well, Jeff, uh, the, the fans in the Schmodown community have no shortage of words to say for you, sometimes in your favor, sometimes to your detriment. But either way, you look at the amount of Wheaties boxes behind you, that's around <laughs> how many legendary performances you or your teams have had in the movie trivia showdown. So what do you, the odd couple plan on showing the world here, not just today, but through the run that you could go on in this tournament? I mean, I, w I want to shock the world. I made it to the finals. I already shocked him once, right? In the singles tournament. Now Andreco and I are going to do it again. I want to grow old with this guy. We just got to find a way to spice it up. And I think that, you know, Jader and Brandon, those guys, they're going to help us. They're going to help us get our mojo back. You know what I'm talking about? At they're the like they're yeah. like the Spanish fly for our, our relationship. A lot of talk before the match even starts, Christian. I like where this is headed. All right, well, we're going to bring back Category 9. Here they are. Category 9 is here. And now the uh, odd couple, Category 9, are ready to play, Mark. What do we got? All right, the rules of round number one. At least one competitor has to have a Dr. James Beckett price guide behind them. So thanks for providing that, Mr. Snyder. In round number one, although it is the team format, it's an individual exercise of movie trivia schmodown knowledge. Eight questions are asked to the field. You may not want to print your teammate to answer these questions. However, every point that you earn will be added to your team's total. Each question is worth one point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. You eat. I didn't hear any of that. Can you repeat it? Could you repeat the a question? JTE rule. No. Which I was about to get to. As a team, you have three of those, and so use those wisely. Those are for repeat the question. You want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer. You also each have one challenge to be issued as a team. You may initiate the challenge, then we'll bring in your manager to confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. That may be used at any time throughout the three round match. Christian, I saw a lot of hubbub. I saw a lot of trash talk, but now all I'm seeing are game faces. These four gentlemen look ready to go. All right, so we asked Mark and Draco, are you ready? Go for it. Brandon Hanna, are you ready? I'm ready. Jeff Snyder, are you ready? As ready as those flowers look back there. <laughs> Shader, are you ready? Let's go. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one, question number one, action adventure. Who plays the character of Marco Ramius, the commanding officer of Red October in The Hunt for Red October? You know, Christian, the odd couple, I'm gonna give you some trivia here. Which two comedians that live together became the odd couple that we know. Not Walter Matthau and Jack Lemmon. Gotta ask me later. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. And Mark Andreco. Sean Connery. Yes. Brandon Hanna. Be Sean Connery. Jeff Snyder. Sean Connery. And Jada Paramo. Sean Connery. All right. We'll hear what's tied up as we get to question number two. Be very disappointed at least one of you didn't attempt in it there. Crime movies is the next category, and for a point, Charlize Theron, Mark Wahlberg, and Edward Norton co-star in what 2003 heist movie? Uh, the answer to my trivia question, Christian, Steve Simone, and may he rest in peace, James Price. I would have gotten it. And five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and Brandon Hanna. That be the Italian job? Yes, it is. Right. Jeff Snyder. The Italian job. Yep. Jader Paramo. The Italian job. Mark Andreco. The movie Ed Norton had almost was sued. He had to be in the Italian job. There it is. Fact from the Android. As we get to the third question, category of dramas. What 1989 Edward Zwick film is about the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, the Union Army's first African-American regiment in the American Civil War. I'm glad Mark Andreco referenced Spanish Fly. You know, everybody talks about eruption, but it's an acoustic tune on Van Halen 2. Um, nonetheless, R.I.P. And five, four, 
trying to look up Three, Brandon's thing. Two, one. Pens down, please. Jeff Snyder. Glory. Yes. Parama. Glory. Uh, and Draco. Glory, glory, hallelujah. And Brandon Hanna. That would be glory. So we have ourselves a tie game here as we get to our next question. Yeah, everybody seemed to be playing well and settling in nicely. Let's see how you handle this next category. It's the 1890s, excuse me, the 1990s. And here's the question. Who stars as a nomad simply known as the Postman in 1997's The Postman? I can't say it's not Ralph Biscuits. Uh, don't give away who it's oh, not. Right. Right. He was probably writing Ralph Biscuits. Five. Where are these Brandon oh. Hansas? Three. Where are your Two. hands, buddy? One. Writing. Pens They're writing. Down, please. Pens down, please. And Jada Parama. Kevin Costner? Yes. Uh, and Draco. He sings a duet with Amy Grant in the credits. Oh. Kevin Costner. Oh, I didn't know that. Brandon Hanna. I didn't pull that one. Brandon Hanna did not have it. And Jeff Snyder. Kevin Costner. The odd couple takes their first lead. And Jada Paramo doing exactly what he did in the first round, staying perfect thus far. As we get to our next question, question five. And that would be fantasy sci-fi. All right. James Bobbin directed what 2016 Disney fantasy sequel starring Johnny Depp and Sasha Baron Cohen? I'm going to go ahead and say the funniest line ever in Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul is when Saul says that he once hooked up with a girl because he convinced her he was Kevin Costner. That one's a good one. And five, four, three, two, one. JG. All right, that was Paramo, first one. Okay, here it is. James Bobbin directed what 2016 Disney fantasy sequel starring Johnny Depp and Sasha Baron Cohen? First one by category nine. It's a good question. And five, four, three, two, one. All right. Pens down. And Mark and Draco. Through the looking glass? Through the looking glass is correct. And Brandon Hanna? Is the full title not Alice Through the Looking Glass? Alice Through the Looking Glass is correct. In Snyder? Alice Through the Looking Glass. Correct. And Jader the Hurricane Paramo? Nope. Do we, want a, uh, do we want to challenge Mark and Draco's answer there? Jader and you Ken. Want, do you want to bring in? We can bring in Ken. Let's bring in Ken. You're going to lose it, and they're not going to have the challenge again. All right. So Ken, uh, there's a conversation. Go ahead, Brandon. You can make your case to your manager why you want to challenge it. Go ahead. All right. What do we think here, Ken? Here's a chance for you to redeem yourself. Is it not the full title if you don't include the name Alice in the beginning? Is that something we want to look into, or we do want to let this one slide? I'm uh, morally opposed to challenges, uh, but I also think this one uh, is, is worth a challenge. If, if you feel it, I, I want to go with your gut instincts here. I, I love Mark Andreco. And I, I want nothing to do with pissing Mark Andreco off, but I also want to win the game. All right, are we challenging, Ken? Yes. All right, we're going to challenge that. Can All right. get a defense? What is your defense? Well, I think if you ask for a sequel of Lord of the Rings, you'd say the two towers, and through the looking glass is, is that, basically. But go on. Do your thing. We're going. We're going to confer with myself and PJ, and we'll be back in a moment. In the words of Dark Helmet, we're back, and we have the combination. So, after consulting with the judges, we have come to the conclusion that the challenge will be upheld. The full title of the film is Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's not a Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, or a The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers situation. The full title of the movie is Alice Through the Looking Glass. There's no colon, and there's also another film from 2006 called Through the Looking Glass. So it's a tough call, but it is the correct one, as the precedent has been set. Mark Andreco's point will not be awarded, and the usage of a challenge for category nine will be retained. All right, so we're gonna remove Roxy and we're gonna remove Ken 
and we will get back here. Okay, so now the score will be odd couple nine. Category nine has eight points. All right, as we get to our next question here, our next question mark is, cat- is number six. Yeah, and after a tough ruling like that, I don't expect a lot of noise, but uh, it is the category of comedies. <laughs> sure. Okay, we'll move on to the question for a point. What 2005 comedy co-stars Jim Carrey and Tay Leone as a rich couple who turn to crime after they lose all their money? So right now, only Jeff Snyder is perfect. Jada Promo also missed that one. That is correct. Christian, have you ever resorted to crime? Talking about that Mortal Kombat arcade machine. Three. That wasn't me. Two. One. (coughs) Hands down, please. And Brandon Hanna. That would be Fun with Dick and Jane. Correct. Jeff Snyder. Fun with Dick and Jane. Yes. Jader. Fun with Dick and Jane. And Mark Andrejko. Fun with Dick and Jane. (laughs) Correct. All right. So 11-10 after that one. And now we have question seven in the category of horror slash thriller. Who plays the lead role of Lieutenant Mike Harrigan, who is attempting to solve a strange string of murders that are mounting in Los Angeles in Predator 2? Oh, my God. The gusto with which you read that question. How long have you been waiting for a Predator 2 question? All my life, as young Anakin Skywalker would say. Five, four, three, two. One pens down and Jeff Snyder. Danny Glover. Yes. Karama. Oh, I, I put Donald Glover. Oh, Karama uh, did not have it. And Mark Andreco. I'm getting too old for this. Yeah. Danny Glover. Yes, and Brandon Hanna. That would be Danny Glover. Yeah. That is correct. All right, so Jader misses that one, and we see ourselves now. The odd couple has. <laughs> Jeff Snyder has not missed. So if Jeff Snyder gets the following question, he and only he will have a chance for the bonus question. Mark, question number eight. That's right. We are excited. The fans are watching. The dogs are barking. Your last category, animated movies. Movies drawn by hand, computer, claymation, stop motion. And here's the query. Chris Rock voices an overzealous white blood cell with little respect for authority. In what 2001 animated live action hybrid film from the Farrelly Brothers? And you talk about closing it out. Jeff Snyder has an opportunity to do what he did in the singles tournament here. Five, four, three, two, one. Jada Parama. Osmosis Jones. Yes. Mark Andreco. Osmosis Jones. Brandon Hanna. That would be. Osmosis Jones. Jeff, for the perfect round. I almost messed this up. Osmosis Jones. Yes, good for, Jeff. Right. Yeah, for Jeff Snyder. All right, so nice. Jeff Snyder has an opportunity to get the odd couple to go up by three points. Jeff, this is going to be for you and only you. You just have you have your hands up. You do not have to write it down. Here is the question. Jeff, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here it is. What 2008 film stars it's Seth? A category. There's no category. It's just a bonus question. Oh, forgive me. All right. All right. What 2008 film stars Seth Rogen and James Franco, who are on the run after witnessing a murder? Pineapple Express. For one more point, Jeff. Yes. Snyder. And they go up by three points here, Mark, as the challenge was upheld. So it was a great challenge this time by Brandon Hennett. It wasn't a Green Hornet type of challenge. It was a good challenge. And they wind up seeing themselves down by three as we get into round two. Green Hornet, good movie, great soundtrack. The Odd Couple enjoying a three-point lead despite that challenge, Christian. And now as we careen into round number two, it's the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and almighty justice. Each team gets a spin at that third wheel. Once to settle on a category, it's a team format. So six questions will be asked to that team and that team alone. Each question's worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available. So if you're not sure of the answer, Ask for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. In this new virtual age that we live in, we're going to kick the other team out of the stream. 
and they'll be brought back in after the series of questions are done to possibly field any steal attempts. And just a friendly reminder to each team, you may confer on each and every question. We do ask that you give us a, a firm final answer when you are wagering your guess. All right, Roxy, 60 seconds to decide if you want to go first or second starting now. I could literally cry with how in love I am with both of you. I have missed the odd couple so much. You're doing amazing. Jeff with that perfect round. And honestly, nice job, Andreco, Jeff. to me, you had a perfect round yeah, too. You like, yeah, that, that it was, was a that yeah. was a rookie rusty mistake. I'm sorry, it, guys. It, no, don't be sorry. It is what it is. And if they're gonna play like that, you know, they're gonna make it challenging for us, but we're still gonna beat the wanna go first or second? I think that we should probably go first. How are you guys feeling? I actually think we should punt, but Andreco, that, that leaves you. Uh, uh, you're, 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 you're carrying us you, today, by the You point, have the hot so. hand right now, Jeff. If you want to go second, I'm fine with that. Uh, let's, let's, let's let them go first. Yeah. Okay. Odd couple loves to take it from behind. What? What? Right. What? All right. So here, so, all right, we're remove you guys. You guys. You gotta buy me dinner first. Jeff, at Jeff and Andreco, you guys can stay in the waiting room until you find out what your opponents have spun before we move you to the other room. All right, Roxy, you're gonna stay in the waiting room uh, and keep your hands up, please, while the other team spins. All right. So Ken will be back here with Jader and with Brandon. Ken, you got 60 seconds to talk to your team before they spin. Look, Jader and uh, Lindsey Buckingham's hair during the Tusk recording. Listen up. Here's what we got. The pressure's on us. We had a great round. Don't worry about their score. Worry about you. Yeah, it's Pat bumper sticker kind of inspiration here for me, but that's all you need. You know, you've watched this game, you've rooted for this game, you've lived in this game. Go have some fun. Be loose. Shake it up. Have a white cloth seltzer, apple juice, or something like that, and go have some fun. All right. You know, I just want to add, you know, like, uh, just to give a little bit of a better pep talk, Jader, you did really well. You didn't do as good as me in round one, but hey, that was expected. You did really well. We're still in this. Let's get the lead right now. You're my teammate right now, bro. Let's go for it. That's Humble. all. Humble as always, Brandon. Humble as only. All right, here comes the wheel. <laughs> I think uh, this is very advantageous for this team chemistry that it is a virtual match, not in studio. Uh, we do want to give a huge shout out to our Schmodown beloved patron, John Layton, ladies and gentlemen, sponsoring not a slice, but the entire wheel. Thank you so much, John. John's preferred slice is Ice Cube movie. So thank you for that, John Layton. And we also do have a sponsored individual wedge and that wedge is Kevin Smith. So if either team spins Kevin Smith and fields the questions therein, we're gonna find out who that patron is. Could it be Kevin Smith himself? Could it be Chris Jericho? Who the hell knows? Let's get that wheel spun. All right, so here is the spin. All right, John Layton's wheel, round and round it goes. And it's careening towards animated. No, it's Pixar. No, Pixar. That's Pixar. So Pixar, you get 60 seconds to decide if you want to stick with Pixar starting now. Jay? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, this is one of the ones that we talked yeah. about. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, if you're all in Jader, I'm all in. We're a team. We're going to make this decision as a team. Let's go. Wow. Yeah. Let's do Don't yeah. stop believing in tomorrow. Let's do it. All right. So Pixar it is. Okay. All right, Ken, we're, the other team has been removed you are going to be removed as well and now we are going to get to six questions in the realm of pixar six questions and are you guys ready ready yep. all right here you go here's the first one who voices the character of jackson storm mcqueen's new racing rival in cars three what do you think in this one jader do you know it? I got an idea, but I'm not 100% sure. So if you want to go multiple choice, we can get yeah, that. Multiple, multiple choice. Four. All right. Is it A, Michael Keaton, B, Nathan Fillion, C, Army Hammer, D, Chris Cooper? Is it who you thought it was? Well, I want to hear your thoughts first, buddy. Uh, I think it's C. I think it's Army Hammer. I would agree with that one. Okay. So C, final answer, Army Hammer. Correct for one point. Yeah. All right. Here you go. In The Incredibles, Bob Parr's boss mentions that a company is like an enormous what? Again, I'm feeling multiple choice on this one, Jader. 
Yeah, let's you go. feel the same way? Let's yeah. do that. All right, multiple choice. Is it A, assembly line, B, clock, C, engine, D, piano? I'm thinking A. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, if you were feeling any, any other answer. Do we get a free repeat of the answers once? The multiple choice? Yes, you get one yeah. free. All right, here it is. Yeah. So is it A, assembly line, B, clock, C, engine, D, piano? I'm, if you feel strongly about it, we'll go with it. I was thinking either more B or C. Maybe leaning towards B, but if you still feel strongly Five, about A, we'll do A. Four, three. Let's go with A. Two. A, final answer. That is incorrect. All right. Next question. Which Pixar film involves a young boy named Russell, who is a wilderness scout trying to earn an assisting the elderly badge? I'm thinking up. Yeah, up, final answer. That is correct. Two points. All right. That was question number three. Here it is. In The Good Dinosaur, what does Arlo name the human boy that he finds? I'm feeling multiple on this, but if you want to use the JTE, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, multiple, choice. multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Nash, B, Buck, C, Spot, D, Butch? I'm thinking maybe A on this one. Five, Four. Three. I think it's Buck. Two. Buck, final answer. It is incorrect. You chose B for Buck. That is incorrect. All right. Here is the next question. Question five. It's a tied yeah. all game at the moment. Willem Dafoe voices the character of Gil in what 2003 Pixar film? Finding Nemo. Oh. Yeah. Finding Nemo, final answer. That is correct. All right, here's your final question. Randy Newman performs the song The Time of Your Life in what 90s Pixar film? I think I think? got it. Five. Go with your gut, man. Four. A Bug's Life, final answer. That's correct for two points. Oh, you All dog. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, oh, you, always, you always get me with those. So 2016, as we are done with this round on The Odd Couple, there are two opportunities to steal, uh, both with multiple choice. You guys can stick around for the steal opportunities and to see what your opponents spin, and then you have to drop out. Roxy, you'll be able to, choose, you'll be able to talk to your team after their steal opportunities. All right, so here we're going to remove them for the moment. Jeff Snyder and Andraco will return. And as soon as they're back, Jeff Snyder is in. Mark Andraco, who is now cleverly renamed himself to Alice. Uh, all right, guys. Any steal opportunities? What's the deal? Let me tell you first. The score at the moment is 2016. Category 9, 2016. So you have two opportunities to steal both with multiple choice. We will read the question, give you the options, and also let you know what they chose. So you have the opportunity. Are you ready for your steal opportunities, Mark and Jeff? Yes, yes sir. Here's the first one. In The Incredibles, Bob Parr's boss mentions that a company is like an enormous what? A, assembly line, B, clock, C, engine, D, piano. Your opponents chose assembly line. I liked um what the uh, I liked C there the uh, the engine what did what do you think Andreco? I would say either engine or clock. Um, Five, four, up to you. Three. Uh, I'll defer to you. Two. Engine. Final answer. It's incorrect. Answer was clock. Ah, uh, right. that's why I wanted you to take it. <laughs> so here is the other one. In the Good Dinosaur, what does Arlo name the human boy that he finds? Is it A Nash? B, Buck. C, Spot. D, Butch. It, your opponents chose Buck. 
I want to say Spot because it's funny because a, a dinosaur naming a kid a pet, have a pet name, but I don't have any idea. I saw this I, movie. I, I like that too, Andrew. I like it. Spot, final answer. That is correct for one point. All right. Yes. So, so Mark Andreco picks up his point that he lost nice. in the first round. All right, Roxy Steyer, you got 60 seconds to talk to your, uh, your team before they spin, starting now. Amazing job, way to communicate. Keep up that communication as we go into this next one. Make sure the time doesn't run out before you guys give your final answer mm -hmm. because we almost got close there on that one. Um, yeah, and and also I, I, right, flag. and that resulted in me just sort of blurting out an answer I wasn't confident in. So you're right, let's let's keep an eye on the time. And, yeah. and if no, you but, feel confident about something, don't let me overrule you because I'm a strong personality, Andrico. Yes, you no, I, you're I, feeling a good hunch, do it. I wasn't, I wasn't, a, I wasn't, 50% okay. sure on that one. Okay. So that good news you, were, is, you, you weren't bullying. That was me. It's only a point. It's only a point. As the good, good news is we are in an awesome position right now. They yeah, had let's a run the really table. Let's get the wrong points. Too. Yep, let's here go. we go. I believe in you guys. I could not have more love in my heart right now. You guys are just crushing it. So let's spin the wheel. Four questions? Six. 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 Okay. Six teams. 29 20 right now. Yeah, we haven't done teams in a minute. All right, let's do it. All right, here we go. So here is the wheel, the first spin by the odd couple. Of course, unless they land on a opponent's choice. But other than that, they can spin again if they want to, Mark. It is John Layton's wheel, and Kevin Smith is lurking as a category, but we're going to spin again. Oh, spin again. Look at that, Andrako. Guess we left out. Yeah. Avoiding that Pixar. Good round and round it goes. This time we're caught. Ooh, it's Inner oh. Geek. Inner Geek I feel like that's a respin, guys. Spin that again. Yeah. So All right. Yeah. No choice. matter yeah. what this lands yeah. on, we're yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Again. No matter what, guys, stay in it. Keep positive. You've got go. the two of you. You there know the go. answer to every single question that could be asked. Musicals. And there oh. we go. Here we go, go buddy. This Here is you. This is you, Mark. Okay. Right. Sing right. it home. Sing it home, baby. You guys got this. All right. Dropping Roxy out. Mark, they're going to get six questions in the realm of musicals. All right, so Mark Ellis will be asking the questions. Thank you. That is my name, and the category is musicals. There is no chance for a knockout, but the odd couple certainly within range of giving themselves a sizable lead and maybe a TKO possibility in round number three. Category nine is elected to not challenge the claim that Jeff Snyder is indeed a strong personality. So here we go with your six questions. For two points, unless you need multiple choice, you can find Tevye a poor Jewish milkman living in the village of Anatevka in what 1971 musical? I know this completely, Jeff. Can I go give him the final answer? Why don't you tell it to me before? Okay, it's, the, it's Fiddler on the Roof. Yes, yeah, say those words. Final answer, Fiddler on the Roof. It's actually Alice Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> uh, oh, my that, eyes That's how we'll do it though, Andreka. Just clear it with me first. All right, here we go. Here's, uh, here's question number two. Moving on to your next question for two more points. Who directed Hugh Jackman as P.T. Barnum in 2017's The Greatest Showman? Oh, it was uh, Michael something. Um, freak. Uh, Want to do multiple choice? I don't, I'm not sure. Five. Hold on. Three. Two. Multiple choice. Multiple choice. I'll, and I got it, Mark, because I'll know who it is. All uh, right, your multiple choice options for a point. Is it A, James Mangold, B, Rob Marshall, C, Adam Shankman, or D, Michael Gracie? D. Yeah. As in dog. Final, final answer. answer. D as in dog, final answer. That's a good answer because it's correct for a point. All right, question number three. All right. We're now yeah. tied in here. It's your next question. In the world of musicals, in the Rocky Horror Picture Show, who played the quote, hero, Brad Majors. Oh, um. Oh, what's his name? Um, we have to multiple choice. Five, <sighs> four, three. Yeah, I know it, but it's, it's not there. Multiple, multiple choice. choice. Multiple choice. Your options for a point. Is it A, Barry Bob, B, Dennis Quaid, I, C, I, yeah, Don it's, Johnson, it's, or D, Jeff Bridges. A, right? A, Barry Bostwick. Yeah, A is an apple. That is correct for another point, and they're starting to feel it in this category, Christian. Just a reminder, guys, to say final answer uh, so, we, so we know. All right, next one. All right, that is, once again, in the category of musicals for two points. Who played Willy Wonka 
in the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I got this right. Can I say Gene Wilder, Mark? Sure. Gene Wilder, final answer. Be upset if you didn't get it. That is two points. And Christian, we careen into their next question. And that, for two more points, what was the name of Robert Preston's character in the 1962 film, The Music Man? First and last or just for last? Hands up, Mark. We need the first and last name. Multiple choice, and if you don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure the fuck they're going to take for the first name, so multiple choice, please. All right, multiple choice. Your options, four in total. Is it A, Albert Peterson, B, Henry Higgins, C, Leo Bloom, or D, Harold Hill? It's D, Jeff. It's Harold Hill. So, All right. Uh, right. Final answer is D, Harold Hill. That is correct for another point. And Christian, they're negotiating their way, multiple choicing it. It's a four point lead for the odd couple right now. They have a chance to extend that to six. If we get this, we, yeah, this is big mark. So let's, let's yeah. get it too. Here it is. One more question. And here it is. You can find the characters of Rizzo, Frenchie, Kanicki, and Sandy in what 1978 film? Can I say, wait, we're sure it's the first one, right? Go for it, stud. All right, can I say Greece? Yes. Greece, final answer. You can say that, and you would be correct for two more points than Christian. It's a six point advantage for the odd couple going oh, yeah. to round number three against category nine. All right, no steal available there as we will bring back uh, Roxy. Nice and, done, Jeff. And, and we're just waiting for category nine, and we will bring everyone back. All right, so there are no steal opportunities on the table. The score at the moment is odd couple 26. Category nine has 20. So. We will now get to round number three, the final round. Mark, how's it go? This is the round that will determine the match. Lest we go to sudden death overtime, we are prepared with questions for that in that event. In round number three, we need a series of numbers from each team. Each team's going to give us three numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. They have to be unique and may not match your opponent's numbers. Why? Because each one corresponds to a different category of movie, trivia, schmodown, goodness. First question's worth two points. Next one's worth three. The final one is worth five. This is the team format. So once we tell you the specific genre of the two-point question, the team will confer amongst itself and decide which member will be answering that query solo. You may not rely on your teammate for the three-point or the two-point question, the opposite teammate than answering the three-point question. You may only confer for the final five-point question. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number three so christian because the odd couple came back they were down halfway through round number two now they have a six point lead they have the option to give us their three lucky numbers first so andraco snyder from one to 20 what feels fortunate mark you want to go first pick a number uh my birthday the 20. Thank uh, you. my birthday the 10th roxy what's, what's your birthday what's your birthday 13 baby 2010, 13. Guys, yeah. And Sexy for, numbers. And for category nine? Sexy birthday numbers. What are you thinking, Jader? Well, they took my sexy birthday number, so that's fine. Yeah, uh, we did. So I'll go with my, my birthday month. We'll go seven first. All right. And then we'll do eight. And Ken? He doesn't talk, remember? Oh, okay. Right. I'll go. Let's go. Let's go. Um, 18. Oh. <laughs> All right, 7, 10, 10, 18, and 20, 10, and 13 for the odd couple. All right, and a reminder to the Category 9 has two JTEs left. The odd couple have all three. All right, so let us now t have Roxy. You have 60 seconds to talk to your team starting now. You never know what can happen in round three, guys. Mm -hmm. Stay in this, stay focused. Make sure we're strategic about when we hear the categories, who is taking what because this is where people get too cocky and we're not Absolutely. doing that. We've got a great lead here, but we don't know what Jader and Brandon Hanna are capable of. So I'm feeling really confident and proud of you guys, but stay in this. Use your JTEs when you need them. You've got this. I have no notes. Yep. All right, awesome. great. So now Kill Ken, it, boys. Ken will talk to his team starting now. Ken, 60 seconds. Uh, Jader, Brandon, look, remember when you both DM'd me 
because I won't give you my cell phone number. And you said, we want <coughs> to be here. You want to be here. And that means you belong here. You know you're capable of anything can happen. Before Mark Ellis took my job, and I used to call these matches, I used to see so many things go down in the third round. They can get overconfident. They can get cocky. And as we've already learned today, they can mess up. Let them do what they're going to do. Do what you know you're capable of doing in this round. All right. So Ken Napstock has talked to his team. Roxy has talked to her team. We're going to remove Roxy. And now we will get to Jader and Brandon Hanna. Category 9. You guys will go first. And you're trying to avoid the TKO here. As we get to your first category, that is Category 7. Category 7. No pressure. And that is scores and soundtracks. Who will be taking it? How do you feel about that one, Jader? Look in your eye. It looks like I should go with it. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. I'll take it. All right. So Brandon Hanna is going to take this one. And here it is, Brandon Hanna. Who composed the score for The Lion King and Interstellar? That would be Hans Zimmer. For two points. All right. So now we bounce to Jader. Jader, for your three-point question, you chose musicals. So here is your three-point question. Here it is. Julianne Ha and Diego Bonetta star in this 2012 musical. Five, four, three, two, one. Right. And nothing. So the, look, we were looking for Rock of Ages. Rock of Ages. Oh, no, I said rent, rent, but it's still wrong. It's okay. Oh, sorry. We didn't hear you, but uh, yeah. I we heard, heard it. I heard it. Okay. Uh, the answer is Rock of Ages. Sorry, Rock of Ages. All right. Here it, here it is. So you have chosen category 18 for your five-pointer. If you hit it, you will take the lead and force the odd couple to hit their two in order to win. However, if you miss it, the odd couple and the rock stars will win via TKO and pick up four points. Are you ready for the five? Ready. Let's All go. right. You chose remakes and reboots. Here it is. Martin Scorsese has directed two remakes. Name both of them. All right. Well... <clears throat> One of them is, um, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on that one. The remake of Infernal Affairs, yeah, Leonardo so DiCaprio. Five. Yeah, The Departed. Departed. Four. Uh, Three. JTE, please. All right, here's the second one. All right, Martin Scorsese directed two remakes. Name both of them. All right, let's see what else has he got. Um, what has he done recently? Silence isn't a remake. Is is it? another, it's not a remake, no. no. Five. I don't think Exit New York be there. Three. Last JTE, please. Last JTE rule. Last one. Martin Scorsese has directed two remakes. Name both of them. All right. You have a guess, man, or what? <laughs> no, that, The Departed is, is the one that I knew. Um, so I'll say uh, five, four, three. To the, the departed, departed in silence. Florida. Our gangs in New York. The answer we're looking for was the departed and Cape Fear. Those were the two right there. So Roxy Stryer, your two, number one, your number one, number two pick. The odd couple, the former champs, pick up another victory here. Snyder wins yet another tournament match as they make it to the next round. How are you feeling? So good. Not only did we win, we needed every one of those points, and we won so beautifully. The communication between the two of these guys, like some some magic happens when they're together. Um, they truly complement each other so well. And, you know, we weren't coming into this match lightly because, yes, these are newbies, but you never know. You never know what can happen in these tournaments. There's upsets all the time. And to see what they were able to do in round one and then round two, and we didn't even have to get to round three. I, just, I honestly could cry with how much I love 
the odd couple. This is my team, my soul for life. I, they're everything. Yeah, and uh, as much as I want to ask Jeff how many coloring books are behind him, my question is for the Android, Mark Andreco. Tough challenge there that went against you in round number one. How are you able to emotionally recover from that so quickly and get right back into the match? Because it's one point in the scheme of things. It bummed me out that I didn't get a perfect round because I did technically, but that was my mistake, you know? And once again, that's part of why this is so challenging doing it digitally. There's going to be a little rust even on players that have been playing as long as Jeff and I have. But I got to say, overall, this felt so good and so familiar and so just right that I can't, I can't be grateful enough for Jeff and Roxy because they bring out the best in me. I hope I bring out the best in them. And uh, it was a fun match. It was a fun match. I like playing Jader. As far as Jader and Hannah go, like Hannah, you played well. Jader, you got to go back and hit the books, kid. And the fact that you guys can't pull uh, Cape Fear and the Departed, those are, that's, a, that's a layup. You guys got a gimme for a five-pointer. Poor showing, boys. Poor showing. Ken Napsok and Jader and the Hitman. All right, guys, you know, it was a it was a tough one. Do you, let me ask you, Brandon, do you think do you regret sticking with Pixar in that second round? No, I, I don't regret it. You know, I think some of the questions weren't quite what we prepped for. You know, I think we came to this match pretty prepared for more than a few wheel slices, even more so than the ones that we asked to put on. So I think we're actually a really solid team. I think we put on a great performance. Uh, just at the end of the day, we lost to experience. It was the inexperience as a team that I think hurt us the most. Even just discussing amongst ourselves backstage during round two, we came up with a handful of things that we've learned from that we would do differently last time. So, you know, I wouldn't say this about much anyone else, but I look forward to the potential opportunity to play with Jader again and to play against Jeff Snyder again. You know, because of you and everyone, I, I, I don't know, I think... I've turned over a new leaf. And you know what, Jeff? Just just thank you so much for the flowers. They were just as beautiful as you are. So thank you. All right, well, there you go. Je go ahead, Mark. Jeff Snyder sending flowers to Brandon. Hey, that's an interesting pre-match tactic. I, I, my question is for Ken, because Ken, like, like Brandon and Jader, they seemed to lock in okay once they were actually playing in the game, but there were some verbal jabs thrown from Brandon to Jader. So, in terms of this team and how long they can put together a run with the two of them, is this a Dan Marino quarterbacking the Dolphins situation or is it more of a Gus Farratt quarterbacking the Dolphins situation? No, no one's running in the walls after scoring touchdowns here. Look, what I would say and will say right now, first of all, I, I love Mark Andreco. I wouldn't, the, the class, the lack of class shown by Jeff and, and Roxy with his win, I, I wouldn't expect anything less from a townie. But here's the thing about Jader and and, and Brandon, you know, uh, dreams are good to have. Uh, we didn't lose by a landslide. Landslide. I think you guys are a good team. I think you got a lot to learn and I don't think you should break the chain, but maybe you could go your own way. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll find that out. Or, or maybe it's a case of never going back again. But, you know, if, Hannah, you, you've been in my ear. You've been jabbing at me. We were forced to work together and I really wanted to give you a chance uh brandon i really wanted to give you my world but how can i when you won't take it from me man you, you, you guys wanted pixar it didn't happen i'm disappointed i know you are too but really honestly from the bottom of my heart i really do think you guys love this game and you respect this game and i think you can pick yourself up in the future it's wide open for all of you well look there you go so the burning droogs uh looks like one of the last matches of the season it seems um I guess, uh, you know, Jader, this was a run that you had. You had a nice little run in the singles here. Teams obviously didn't go the way that you wanted it to. But do you what do you see for yourself next season uh, as we hopefully go back to, uh, a, a, I wouldn't say normalcy, but maybe a little bit uh, off of the digital age? Yeah, no, it was, it was a little off today. I wasn't on my A game. Uh, I only blame myself, to be completely honest with you. Brandon came. He, he came to show up. Um, I know I'm better than this. I know that I, I missed some today that obviously once the answer was said, I'm like, why the hell didn't I like didn't compute? Um, but uh, again, it's a first time. It's a digital wheel. Uh, you know, we're still getting used to this. Hopefully, you know, when we get back to the studio, things are going to be a lot different. Um, but I, I'm ready to win, man. I'm ready to get back. Like, I know we're out for the tournament until next season, but I need next season to start tomorrow, you know? 
Well, there you go. Jada Paramo, Brandon Hanna, Ken Napsack. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, didn't go this your way this way, but we'll see you back next season. All right, dropping out um, category nine. And Mark, you know, the odd couple were the champions for a reason. They, they're some of the best players we've ever had. They, uh, they, Mark Andreco, I think, nailed it when he said that there's just a comfortability with the two of them. There's a reason why the odd couple television show lasted as long as it did because of the way, because of the chemistry, because how different was these two guys, as much as they want to keep saying, I don't know if we're going to stick together. There's something that just works. Roxy knows it. Roxy encourages it. And Roxy's taking them to the semifinals of this tournament. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Mark Ellis and everybody who makes this show happen. If you didn't subscribe, please do so. If you haven't joined the Patreon, please do it. It keeps us alive. And I can't even tell you how important it has been during this digital age. If you can find a way to do it, we try to give you guys as much as possible to for content, whether it's exhibition matches, pay-per-view access, behind-the-scenes content. And we're going to continue to do it more because you guys are the reason we are able to continue to do this show. So please join today, patreon.com slash schmodown. For Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. See you next time.